Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we'll be revisiting the sleepy town of Smallville with five members of its cast. And now is the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions for them. Immediately after this session, you will have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as purchasing autographs and personalized video recordings, all of which are available now at GalaxyCon.com. So now let's bring out our guests. First, he is an actor, director, writer, and producer, who, and also a Disney park aficionado, whose body of work includes Hunted, Impastor, the voice of Wally West in several animated forms, and the host of his own interview series, Inside of You. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Lex Luthor. Please welcome Michael Rosenbaum. I'm used to such applause, and it's just really quiet in my office right now, Patty. I know. It's really quiet. Hi, guys. How are you? It's a joy to be here. Real treat. Absolutely glad to have you here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Uh, how, we hope everything is well in your part of the world. Oh, yeah. You know, playing with my dogs and uh, cleaning poop in the backyard. Uh, that's my life nowadays. I just got I had my 48th birthday, and I get to see my uh, fellow castmates here. You know, it's very exciting. <laughs> We're absolutely glad to have you. And speaking of castmates, she is an actress and producer whose credits include Beauty and the Beast, Burden of Truth, and Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li. Today, she joins us to talk about the role of Lana Lang. Please welcome Kristen Kruok. Hello. 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 <laughs> hey. Trust me. Kristen. Trust me, they're yelling, they're cheering. Believe me, believe me. <laughs> uh, how are you today? I am well today, thank you. It's nice so, and it's been very hot in Toronto and it finally cooled down a little bit, so it's lovely. Oh, well, as always, so glad to have you here. And our next guest, she is an actress whose roles include V Wars, Ice, and Bitten. Today, she joins us to talk about the role of Kara Kent, aka Kara Zorel, aka Supergirl. Please welcome Laura Vandervoort. Hey. Hey. Hi, how are you? We are good. How are you in your part of the world? Uh, doing well, doing well. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This is, this is a, a whole new world. So thank you. Absolutely. The pleasure is ours. And next she is an actress whose body of work include and director whose body of work includes Saving Hope, House of the Dead, and the recent CW series, Supergirl. Today we talk about her role as Lois Lane. Please welcome Erica Durantz. Yay! Yay! Oh, it's better coming in later because I didn't mean it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You can't get, ah! So, uh, Erica, how are you in your part of the world? Um, really great. It's good here and a little crazy with my little kids running around and screaming, but I've locked them away. I mean, oh. they're safe, but I've locked them away. Okay, good. that's good. That's good. If you want to bring them on, we 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 welcome them. <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it's funny. I can't tell how many guests we've had here, and their toddlers just sort of walked on in and like, "Daddy's work at Daddy's." Work. Okay, fine. And they plop them on and say, "Say hello to everybody." Hi. So uh, that's fun. And Laura, that goes uh, that goes for your dog as well. If you want to join. Oh, she'll be she'll be coming in. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of coming in, he is an actor, director, and producer whose credits include Judging Amy, Lucifer, Draft Day, and the upcoming series Professionals. Today, he joins us to talk about the role of Clark Kent, aka the Blur. Please welcome Mr. Tom Welling. Hey! Yay! Hey! Woo that's quite the introduction. I mean, speaking of coming in, I like you um... know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if this was all all our just like our little group affirmation thing and nothing else was going on? There was nobody actually there. Is that what it is? No one's watching. Oh, I, 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 this has been like what we do every week, where we all get on a video chat together and we talk about our lives. And I'll right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd love to, what I'd love to do for our audience, if they don't know, I would love to hear how each of you individually got involved with Smallville. And let me just say this up front: thank you for your contributions to Smallville. Oh. Thank you for for ten seasons of you blazed eleven. Sorry, eleven. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, eleven. Uh, but you you blazed the trail. Oh, Tom, he's messing with us. He's messing with us. Some only did seven. I think he's seven. 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 Some only did four. Some only did. Yeah. Why don't, why don't we <laughs> okay. I did them all. I did them all. How, there are no small roles in acting. How's that? <laughs> All right, I got him. I got him to put down his coffee. Regardless of which, thank you for thank you for Smallville though, because it blazed the path for so many opportunities. It showed that 
taking even any facet of a comic book universe can translate to television, can translate into live action, and doesn't have to necessarily be beholden to the bright costumes and everything else. They could be human stories, and that's what I always looked at Smallville. It's the first opportunity to let's tell let's tell a TV story with comic book elements as opposed to a comic book story forced oh. through forced through TV. Wow, I didn't see it that way. That sounds great, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did try to represent humans a little bit. And like yeah. the human stories, so. I I absolutely think you did. So, with that being said, uh, how, where did this uh, where did this uh, journey begin for you, Kristen? Tom, th- Kristen, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen. Uh, well, I was in Vancouver um, auditioning. I you uh, what? You were the first one cast. They casted you before I was, you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I just auditioned. I was I, I had gotten a role in a TV show in, in Vancouver. I had intended uh-huh. to go to post-secondary school. And I uh, went on tape and um, and it went to L.A. and they liked it. And I went out and tested and got the role. And that was that. <laughs> and you, it was Edgemont before, right? That you were. Yeah. Edgemont. Great show. Was a huge fan here. So. <laughs> Did they did they give you any heads up about the character leading into it, or it was just okay? You got the part, and you'll get the script when you come on board. Well, they I don't know that I had a script at that time. I feel like it was one of those shows where they were pretty protective of a script. Mm-hmm. Um, I just had the sides that I had, and I knew very little about her. They I don't know how much they knew at the time either. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I just, it was one of many auditions I was doing at that point in time. It kind of didn't stand out in any particular way um, until I got traction. I had uh, I had done other shows in the WB and CW, and I was always praying one day that I'd be on a network with more than two letters besides the WB and the CW. But, uh, you know, I, I, some, <laughs> I'm a casting director from a show. I was on one show, a pilot that went a year, and then another year, and then the pilot, got, it was failed. And they said, hey, bring him in. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I didn't I didn't want to go in. And supposedly like 700, I think Al Goff told me, 700 other actors came in. And I was like, why are they bringing, what do they want? Why do they want me? And they're like, well, we want, I go, to ask them what they want. And they're like, we want a sense of danger, a sense of charisma. I, said, I remember, they, they never gave us a script. They just gave us three pages or whatever. Yeah. And I just circled that. I go, I'll be charming here. I'll be evil here. I'll be this. I went in there and I had more confidence. I was like, I'm not going to do this. I don't think this is what And it just happened. And I remember they wanted to test screen me and I go, no way, I'll never do that good again. I told my agent, he goes, what do you want to do? Tell them to rewind the tape. <laughs> and uh, somehow they did and, and that was it. After I met with them once. So it was, uh, it changed my life. It was the by far the best thing I had done. And, uh, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Up until that point, it certainly was. Oh, uh, well, uh, it's a movie called Urban Legend, which I'm really proud of. So I was actually, I love that movie. But anyway, Tom, how to go with your, with your modeling and your beauty? Well, my, so there are a couple of things. One is I didn't come in on the first round of auditions because like Kristen, there, it was the time of year where there were a lot of different projects going on, and I was sure. they were offering a script to read, and they, my manager at the time said, well, Smallville either has a script and they're not showing it, or it's so bad they don't want to show it. So I turned down the first audition. I just I didn't turn it down. It wasn't offered to me, but I didn't go in. And then weeks later, David, I get a call from David Nutter, who directed the pilot, and he wanted to talk, and he goes, listen, you can come in, we'll let you read the script in our office, but you have to sign a waiver. And I was like, okay, so I went in and I read it and I realized this is a really good show. And it wasn't about Superman, it was about this kid trying to figure out who he is in high school. And I was like, wow, this is really great. So then they're like, okay, so you'll read. And I said, no, um, I'd like to sit down with the writers and like Al and Miles and these guys and ask some questions because I want to know what the show's about. And so I went in with about four or five pages of questions and I made them answer them all. The, and wow. they, but the great thing was they had all the answers. They were very prepared. The show was very well designed and well written. And then I ended up my first screen test. Uh, they it was so late in the game. They brought me in and they're like, "You're going to read with Kristen." Um, and Chris. <laughs> and it was me and Jensen Ackles. 
uh, funny enough. He ended up he ended up being doing okay, you know, on his show. But um, and he was on Smallville. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I went in. I got to read with Kristen. I forgot my lines. She gave me a line, and everybody thought that I just took a real emotional pause. But it turns out I just forgot my line. Um, and then that was it. Next thing you know, we were all on set in Vancouver. It was very quick. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had, you know, you'll never see me shirtless with abs like that. Now, really? me, you, oh. yeah, you and Jensen were all ripped up. Yeah, we're <laughs> a bunch of fucking John Deere friends. And I was like, I said F bomb, sorry. Can you F bomb it on the Galaxy Con? You could, yeah, uh, it's, it's your show. Use it. Don't say that. Don't say <laughs> well, that. Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, two weeks ago, we had guys on, and oh. it was a sh shower of f bombs. So it's all. Good. Uh, I mean, the other thing I'll say is, a lot of us, for the first, aside from Kristen and Erica, the, we all met on set. Um, you know, I met Michael on set. We just kind of got to it, and um, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't have been surrounded by better actors and better people. That's why the show worked. Um, it was a very much a group effort. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It, was, it was amazing how we just like all just wanted to help each other and, and make each other better. And it was, I just, I'd never yeah. seen anything like that. And even to this day when I go on sets, people were like, there's a certain air about the, you know, the, it's just being on set and everybody's want, in their own head. And, but this is more like, dude, let's do that again. Let's go to my trailer and let's work this out. Let's, uh, yeah. how do we make it better? How do we make it? Ah, that doesn't, you know, and it was, it was really fun, at least for I'll the I'll tell you one of the worst things was when they asked me to come back early, uh, a couple of days early for the season so I could read with Erica because uh, yeah. she had gotten the role. And, really we read, and at the end, I turned, I turned to the producer. I'm like, you really made me come back like five days early for this? She's perfect. Like, Aww. why, why am so I here? Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, Eric, let me hear about that. Let me hear about that. My, well, one thing that makes me quite different from all of you guys is that I used to book Kristen's stand-in and Tom's photo double. That's right. Because I worked at an extras agency in town. And so when they said that they were going to want me to audition for Lois Lane, I kind of laughed at them. Um, I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And uh, maybe it was that attitude. I don't know. A lot of actors say that it's the kind of when you don't think you're going to get something that it works out. Mm -hmm. And so I went down and I tested for it. And in between the, the two different tests, they made me dye my hair blonde because they thought people would confuse me for Kristen. We look very bizarre. similar. Very <laughs> similar. Yeah, they're like, you look too much. Yeah, they'll, they'll think you're Kristen. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Hmm, okay, <laughs> made for the studio. Um, <laughs> I guess they thought like two chicks if they're if they're brunette. That's nobody's right. gonna be able to know the difference. Two brown hair girls look the same. Yeah, so like that night I went, I ran and I got a, my hair done and came back and Maybe that's why I got it. I don't know. But yeah, it was funny. I went back up to to uh, do uh, some photo tests and and then I read with Tom. And that was kind of like my final audition piece, which I didn't realize, which is probably good because I would have been really nervous. Mm -hmm. And like Tom said, it was it was a good group. Um, for myself coming in later, I really was impressed by how warm everybody was because I was, I was actually quite nervous to be part of it. And I just thought, man, everybody's really down to earth. This is a super popular show. Um, and I just felt like I, I was accepted right away. So it was great. And Laura, right. dude, you had the hardest part, I thought, because she came in after we're all settled in now, and then she just yeah. terrifying. season seven, right? Season, yeah, season seven. You basically left when I came in. You saw me, and you were like, I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a little scary. Uh, you know, it's like the first day at school, but all the other kids went to summer camp together. So... Um, I wasn't sure, if, you know, I'd fit in and I was a fan of the show, but I, I was in Toronto, um, and I did a self tape, didn't think there was a chance in hell because it's such a big show and I'm just like this Toronto girl. Um, but yeah, a month later I, I heard that they liked my tape and they wanted me to fly the next day to LA for, um, a test and flew to LA, did the test with three other girls and found out a couple of days later I had the job and literally move the next week to start stunt rehearsals and learn how to fly. Isn't that amazing how, like, I don't know if you guys, it's always, I'm never like a slam dunk, like Tom and Kristen and Eric, you guys, look, you probably get offers straight. A lot of times when I audition for something, I'm like, 
I, I throw the papers away. I rip them up. I leave. I walk out. I forget about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many projects urban legend, for instance, I'm out at a club. I'm like 25. And this girl comes up to me, Tara Reed back in the day. And she goes, you're Michael Rosenbaum. I'm like, yeah, well, Hey, somebody recognizes me. This is cool. <laughs> no, you're going to be my an urban legend. I go, I auditioned for that like two months ago. I, I didn't get that. She goes, no, like you're going to, you're going to, you're getting part. And I, three days later, they called me and said, yeah, you got it. I'm like, what the f It Like sometimes it takes a month or two months to answer. And then, and then you need to, and then they're like, get on a plane right now. Like it's yeah. all yeah. Like, now, now. It's, I mean, I, when I when I found out that I had to get on a plane, I had just sprained an ankle. So, and I was like, I got to put heels on for this. I got to, so I just like hobbled into the, the test and hope they didn't notice. Right. Yeah, your life changes like that. I'm just picturing you walking into like the room, like hobbling. Little drunk. Like, Hi, I'm going to play Supergirl. <laughs> Probably helped. <laughs> yeah, we're like, Hi, I doubt I'm gonna get this job. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I tell you what, I know we have a lot of audience questions, so what do you say we just jump right into them? And I'll ask Jude, our producer, to roll our first one. And this comes from Spencer. Who was the most familiar or different to their character on Smallville? Hmm. Um, I will jump in real quick because I just based on what Erica just said about her audition. Um, I think that's exactly how Lois would do it. Um, I think there's just a lot of strength and, uh, uh, and core value things that Erica has in common with Lois for sure. Um, but I will say that none of us are exactly like our characters, that's for sure. Wait, what? None of us are exactly like our characters. Like, well, we're all very different, but I would say Erica is the most similar. I'd say I'm the most different. I'm just going to call it out. Nobody. You no, are no. evil personified. Oh, I'm pretty different. Oh. You're Listen. trying to take over the world. Yeah. Well, none of my friends were like, your cast is. This scared me. They're like, yeah. you? You don't like. <laughs> you like walk around nude in the house. Like, well, you're not, you're not Lex Luthor. I was. I, I thought I was going to be fired. And then I thought I was going to have some major. I have a matrix bump in this weird head. They're yeah. going to shake my head. I'm not as pretty as everybody else. They're going to fire me. I thought I was always going to get fired. Something like left. So I, I mean, I definitely like, I, because I was, I honestly was doing something I'd never done, which I was relaxed. I was focused. I was articulate. <laughs> I was, you know, and I was quite doing something that I'm, I'm normally just, you know, fun and, and just yeah. insecure and just trying to be obnoxious. So it was definitely a departure. Oh, I had to I had to contain all that shit, and that was really hard. That was stressful because I had to be cool. I'm not cool, you know. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll add the caveat. I think all of your your personality, from what I gather, that disqualifies you as Lex Luthor in real life, matches pretty well with your version of Wally West. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Fran and yeah, you're right. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> Uh, any form. I love it. <laughs> Anybody else chime in? Kristen, uh, do you think that you were similar to your character? No, I don't. I don't think I was similar to her at all. Um, yeah. That was a oh, long time ago. Now this I don't. Time, yeah. I don't know. Well, you were young, right? You were like seventeen. Like, yeah. I mean, I was nineteen. I was 18 when I got the role in 19, but I, I, she was very different for me, especially in high school. Um, she was popular and she was a cheerleader and she was a country girl and I was none of those things, you know? It's called you know, acting. I have, uh, I mean, everybody has their own way of doing it, but Rosenbaum, especially, and Kristen very much so, we would be in these scenes and the characters would, you know, we'd be doing the scene. And then they'd be like, cut, and they'd be boop, right back to who they are actually. Um, and I was always jealous, especially of Rosenbaum, and how he could just get in and out of the character so quickly because I couldn't do that. Um, but I, I was like, wow, he's, he's, really, he's really good at what he does. Um, Could you imagine if I was like serious the whole time, like, um, no, yeah. this is going to be the way it is, and then cut. Tom, can you please get out of my way? I'm trying to go. <laughs> imagine tense all the time. Oh, my God. That's why I have 
loose enough. I'm going to straight jack it up. Get the fuck out! <laughs> oh welcome, welcome, to, welcome to the set of Smallville. Just remember that Rosenbaum is a method actor. Or a meth. <laughs> 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 when I came in later, I, it was interesting um, because, of course, I was quite nervous and, and I had these impressions of seeing you guys on the show already. So that was kind of cool to to meet you and see how, how different you were and like aspects of your personality that I was like, OK, that's completely different. I, I would have to say with Mike, I, I didn't expect him to be so like he was because of the when we'd go into his focused thing but then he's so high energy and um off as soon as it's done like he was laughing <laughs> and all those things so that was shocking to me because i expected him to be kind of mean um and of course uh i was really intimidated by Kristen, and then um I'm intimidated. Came in and we were talking and she started <laughs> laughing with this really big huge kind of awesome nerdy laugh and i was like that's Kristen because you come you like you you just kind of morphed yourself into the, the you know the quality of the character that they were looking for for the show and stuff mm -hmm. like that and then I found with Welling he was just I mean I worked with you most of the time and yeah. that kind of thing that Clark had where he was always trying to help <laughs> and yeah. just so like so kind about it you were really generous always with me oh. and I saw a lot of leadership there and I thought that that was kind of a, a very much a Clarkism. So I had really great experience. Awesome. And then Laura and I kind of bonded over the fact that we both always had to wear bikinis or strip. And that really helped. <laughs> I never had to strip. No, no, that was just me. They sold something to me that they yeah. later fixed and changed. Yeah. But that's a whole other story. But I didn't get to work with either of you very much at all, the ladies. But I've, I've since the show's ended, actually really gotten to know you. I'd like to more when we get a chance to. But um, it's funny, as soon as the show ended, I felt closer to everyone doing these conventions. And yeah. especially with Kristen and Erica, when we're in the same city, or you know, Kristen and I already are, but um, everyone's busy. So it's been nice though, since this, the show ended. <laughs> yeah, awesome. it was really nice to see everybody after <laughs> like, what, nine, 10 years, it was super cool. Yeah. Well, the show was, it was also so consuming, um, yeah. whether, you were, whether you were there every day or you, when you did come to set, it was all about the work. Uh, it really was for all of us and we had a good time doing it. But I think that also, is why the show lasted as long as it did and the quality stayed up there because everybody came to work. Um, nobody was just like, you know, forming it in. Yeah. And by the way, I don't think it was one of those casts that like went and hung out together all the time. Yeah. You know, people, some people hung out periodically, but we were all working. And I think that's a really good point. I think we came to work. That's true. Like we never hung out. I mean, I think Tom and I went to see Steinfeld once. And maybe we had a dinner here and there, but in, in all those years, nothing. And then afterwards, we see each other more. I think I, the last thing I wanted to see uh -oh. <laughs> was anyone from the show <laughs> on, my, on the weekend. Like, I, you know, with, I was like with my dog. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, well, in, in defense, I mean, a, t a TV yeah. series early schedule enough, a, an effects laden series like Smallville comes with its own issues. I mean, I assume you guys went home and you worked on your lines for the next day. Now you're, you came in and exactly, you had to come in, you had to work. <laughs> so. Well, I, I know for a fact that Rosemom did because he would bug the hell out of me because it'd be like, he's like, hey dude, let's run the scene. Let's run this. I'm like, this isn't the scene we're doing. He goes, no, this is for next week. I'm like, I can't read that <laughs> right now. Okay. I got to know. I got to just focus on this scene that we're doing. He's yeah, just, just run it. Just run it. And he was always a week ahead. Oh, I, I, I had to be. I'm one of those guys, like, I just don't understand. Like, I, I'm envious. And, I, and I, when I think about, like, Kristen Bell can do this. She has a photographic memory. And, and, and I'm sure some of you guys are really good at it. But they get on set and they just look at their sides and they get, read them once. And they just know them. And they're so kind. For me, that that terrifies me. And I want to know the inside out so I can pick up a glass when I'm talking to somebody I can, like real people do. And I have to get so comfortable with it. And I don't, if, if I hear that there's a show that changes the lines constantly on set, on the fly, I don't want to be part of it. That's it's funny how people work differently. Like some people like being on the fly. I know that when I first started on the show, and I mean, Tom helped me a lot with this because of the technical, and I think he recognized that about me. And now I do it wherever I'm at, although it's become second nature, is it's very important for me as an artist to know what's happening, happening technically. I have to know what the, the camera size is. I have to know what they're what they as the creators are looking for 
Yeah. And somehow when I know that that's what the image is, I can calm down. And then I know how to kind of change what I'm doing. And I've spoken to many other actors that go, why do you do that? It would completely take me out of what I'm doing. But if I'm, if I'm not getting a, a picture of what, what we're really trying to say, so that I visualize it in my head and then it helps me. So. I'd, r- I'd rather honestly, no, no one tell me a thing. I'll just conf- like the director, do what you do. Shoot mm-hmm. 150 mil on me and a, and a, and a 50 at the same time. And don't tell me. So I could just like, and all of a sudden we got your close up. I'm like, whoa, awesome. I don't want to think about mm-hmm. it. I know they're on me. I, I you know, I love those yeah. long lenses. But when that camera's up in your face and now you've got to be like right here and your eyeline's a piece of tape next to the lens, it changes the game a little bit. You've got to really hyper focus and it's hard to be as good as if someone's right with you and there's not cameras right. It's easier. Like I, I don't. See, to me, it helps me relax. Like if I know I'm doing a scene that's emotional or something, I want to go like, how many shots do you have? When is it going to go in? How are you wanting to see this? When are you? Yeah. Gonna, how are you going to edit it? Makes it's sense. just bizarre. I I would drive some people like on when I did Saving Hope. I they just kind of would roll their eyes and they knew that I was going to ask and they already came and told me. But <laughs> that was just how I could kind of relax that side of my brain. Sure. Um, yeah. Probably because I was brought up in a like a really rule based thing. Don't make a mistake. Don't make a mistake. You know, like these are the things you're supposed to do. So once I know <laughs> my parameters, then yeah. I was able to relax. Well, and, and and Smallville was like, you know, we we all spent a lot of time looking at like the the, the one eye of a person who was standing behind the mat box because the camera was like right there, and it's like, okay, well, this is, you know, can you look at his left eye? Can you look at her right eye? It's like, you guys. I mean, it was. Well, there's a lot of technical stuff. And, you know, I, Hitchcock said something once where he said, you can do whatever you want as an actor, but if the camera doesn't see it, then it, does, it doesn't mm-hmm. exist. Right. And yeah. It speaks to what uh, you're talking about because you, you kind of know, oh, I'm going to walk over here. Yeah, well, the camera's not over there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you, well, welcome, yeah. So. you learn tricks of the trade. I mean, and you share them with, like, we share them with each other. Like, you know, the whole closest lens if you're the camera's on you and the actors on the right side of the camera to look with your left further side from the camera to their closest side of the camera and it's like more, more of a power thing and a focus thing and yeah. it, lo- it looks better and it's more engaging and it's yeah. a little little tricks that i'm sure everybody does that if they well, how, how about um and I, I i think at least one person in this chat's going to know who i'm talking about you realize that uh blinking isn't your friend <laughs> Do you guys remember anyone who blinked a lot? Oh yeah, there was. Yeah, <laughs> was his name. yeah, yeah I'd say it. I remember there was. Uh, a- it was like you learn those little things. Like yeah. if you're like this through a scene, forget it. You know, that's like yeah. trade. You know, you gotta. Or or have a really amazing editor who just somehow. Can just- <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that Michael used to do when it wasn't on him, when uh, his coverage was over, he would start getting, I feel like you would get bored in the scene and you would start like, just like shutting, like squeezing your eyes. And I eventually, after like doing this several times with you, had to ask someone if you were okay. Cause I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't I think you were just like losing focus. Um, I, I have so many little ticks that happen when I, when I film that I'm on, I'm just like doing And then I was sitting yeah. like, it's just weird that my body goes nuts. Well, I, I also learned from you, Michael, that like when you're off camera, sometimes even though like when you're off camera, there's a way to make what you're doing a little more um, interesting than maybe the way you are on camera for the other actor, like literally for the other yeah. actor. I always, like, yeah, I always yeah. try to get like, I think we all do, but I always feel like I give so much I, I want to. That on my side, I'm like, God, I don't feel like I'm good now. I feel like I'm great on their side. Do you ever yeah. get you feel like that? You're like, now I feel like I suck. But then you get actors who do nothing when it's your coverage and they save it all for their coverage. And so it doesn't yeah. match up because they're doing something different. You're assholes. Uh, yeah. It drives me crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, my, hey, real quick. Sorry, Pat. Last thing. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Uh, Tom Cavanaugh was on my podcast and he was telling me it was an interesting story. He was like, Do you notice how, like, you're doing these superhero shows and he's on the flash and he's like far away, you know, uh, far away from somebody, but he's still doing that accent. He's like, listen to me. <laughs> what are you saying right now? And he's like, listen, I, dude, I can't hear what you're saying. And it's like, it's so like far away for their stuff. Go, hey, dude, here's the deal. Spencer, thank you for that question and led to this fantastic uh, mini clinic on acting for the camera. Oh, 
Yeah, sorry. Dude, no, this is great. This is, this is what we're here for. So, so this is from Leanne. Uh, oh, what new hobbies, if any, have you picked up during the quarantine? Oh. Yeah. Interesting. I started writing an electric assist bicycle. You what? An electric assist bicycle. Oh. So that you, it's manual, but you can also like cheat. Oh, I've been wow. taking a lot of bike rides. Nice. And I put my backpack on and I have my mask and everything. And then I go to a store and I put yeah. on all the protective gear. That's, That's cool. Happy. That's huh? cool. You have the bike into the store? No. <laughs> I, I left that out of the story. I lock it up. Anyways, I've become a little bit more, um, try to get exercise wherever I can. That's also part of being a mom. I'm just like, you never get a chance to really exercise or do anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I do. Oh, I hang out in the backyard yeah. I love. Like my backyard looks like a daycare. I've got a bouncy castle and a trampoline <laughs> and swing set so that my boys can just like run and do stuff so that they don't kill each other. Tom, you've been doing art though, right? Like, I, like you've been like painting and stuff. I saw you doing some art like a few weeks ago. Yeah, that we've been doing that with, with, uh, with our son. Um, just trying to be more creative, sort of like, you know, Erica said, um, I don't think I've picked up any new hobbies. If anything, I've revisited old ones, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. like trying to ride bicycles or go fly fishing or play golf. Or just trying to like, the hardest part is being productive. Like I can, I can do a lot of things that aren't productive, but I'm still trying to find productive ways to spend my time as well. See, I have the yeah. opposite problem that I feel like if I'm not doing something all the time, I can't chill out. So if anything, that the COVID has been like, it's okay, you did enough today. It's uh, all right. Like it's like slowing down because I feel like if I haven't yeah. accomplished something, if I haven't gone out and done a bunch of things. So oh. fair, fair. No. Well, hey, hey, that's yeah. what's really great about this Galaxy Con and you guys figuring out how to do this. This is the first one that I've really done, um, and this is like a way for. I, you know, I feel like I'm going to be doing something today, and it's going to be worthwhile. And you know, <laughs> you know it's good. Hey, by the way, Le Leanne's a, a, a Patreon of mine. She, it's called Patreon, so she supports the podcast stuff. Leanne, you rock. Patty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so no, nobody else has any older new hobbies they picked up during uh, society's pause. Um, old. I started painting again. So, do yeah. You, do you have anything close by that maybe we can reference? Oh, oh you have beautiful yeah. ones. You sometimes show them on your Instagram. They're really pretty. Yeah, oh, thank you. Uh, it's more of like a, an anger slash stress reliever to paint. Because um, for the first three months of COVID, I was uh, watching my niece and nephew, and I've never even babysat before. So to go like, Erica, I don't know how you do it. Like. Th <laughs> What is this? It, it was like it was really, really painful, and then I really got used to it. And since I've I've moved out, but um, that, that was, <laughs> I, I would go into the garage and paint. That was like my space. So nice. yeah, painting, nice and running. I never used to run. So yeah, me too. Running. Oh. I think about you when I run because I remember you started running. Really? Yeah. All right, Michael, what are we looking at? I'm colorblind. I've never painted before, but I just try to do whatever, and that's what I came up with. It looks like a hummingbird. All right. Well, you know, yeah, I, that's, that's yeah. That's Tom, did you do that? Well, that looks like really good colors, even though you're colorblind. I honestly, like, I sit there, it's like a therapeutic for me, and I haven't been doing it as much, but it really helps, and I just get, kind of get lost in it. And it's the first thing in my life that I'm actually doing somewhere I'm like, you don't have to be great. You don't have to be good. Just, just do it. And that's, things are so much more enjoyable when you don't think about success. Yes. <laughs> you got to throw that one out away, Michael. <laughs> just let it go. Um, one of the things I do to calm down as well, and this is new for me, but so, since it's hard for me to sit still and my kids are, you know, I'm trying to get them to do art and these different things and they love it. Cool. I didn't know for the longest time that there were adult coloring books. And I don't mean adult yes. by being gross. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like they're, they're just so coloring great. books that are just super detailed, really beautiful pictures um, that apparently it helps when you have anxiety. So if you're ever like, you're not an anxiety ridden person, Tom, but if you're hanging out with your baby oh. <laughs> and There's he's doing his thing, then maybe you could just sit there and do some coloring. It calmed me right down because I was just, 
they have adult <laughs> or you can paint read by like numbers. Mike does when somebody goes on and on. <laughs> Erica, they have adult paint by numbers as well. So like it's, yeah. it's I did that. That's fun. That's yeah, it's super calming. Hey, Pat. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can we do a rapid fire question thing now so we get more questions in for people? Uh, well, we'll pace today whichever you want. If you want me to pick out the pace, I can certainly do that. So, thank you. and we'll answer real quickly so we get this There's more people. Here. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so. Patty, Patty. Also, maybe um, if you if you feel like directing each question to one of us, and then one of us can chime in after, because otherwise we'll all. Answer. <laughs> Uh, well, this is popcorn style. I'll tell you what, if you feel like okay. you have a, a significant contribution to it, chime on in. I will not hold anybody to any questions. I'll just, if the gas just runs out, out, you haven't asked as many. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So going up into third gear, if this comes from Spencer, uh, what is your real life kryptonite? Maybe good chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I know it's significant. Uh, so, if I eat too much cheese, I get really sick, but I can't stop. Popcorn. popcorn. <laughs> Tom got me great popcorn. The Amish popcorn, Tom. I I, I, I get so bloated from that. Thank you. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. All right. Thank you, Spencer. Jew, what's next? From, from Raj, what has everyone been up to since Smallville? Oh, geez. <laughs> I think all of our hobbies and... I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I have a podcast, folks. I'm sitting there. Erica, your ass is getting on it. Everybody what? else has been on. You're getting on the podcast. Erica. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. You just heard her <laughs> ass is on something. No, you're getting your ass on I it. thought you were going to say my ass is getting fat, and I was like, shut up, Michael. Shut up. <laughs> That's what I've been doing since Smallville. Having <laughs> kids and getting fat. I can't see your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I really it. want to do the po the the pod, but of course now I can't get to LA. Not that I'd oh, ever be there, but we can't Zoom. go. We do a Zoom. Okay. I just figured out how to do Zoom, by the way. Oh, I I didn't oh, really oh, Congratulations. Oh, very nice. It was amazing. Very nice. Hey, a reminder to our audience, if you'd like to chat with our guests like I am now or grab an autograph or a personalized recorded message, please sign up now at galaxycon.com and Jude, roll another one for us. From Harper, weirdest encounter with a fan. Tom? Um, I can't tell you the weirdest ones because it'd be inappropriate. Um, you know, I, I think early on, um, I didn't really, no one can tell you how to sort of deal with the situation, um, but late, I think over time I became more comfortable with the fan experience. And, you know, the show, a lot of people watch the show are like good people. I know Rosenbaum gets some weird things because the character he played, but everybody's like, hey man, cool show. Like it's it's a lot of fun. Actually. Great plan, dude. I think the three of us girls had a tough time because dependent on which um, girl the fans were shipping and what kind of fan base certain characters had we would get like really aggressive stuff so like I when I came in late that was really insane for a lot of people so not that I had a lot of um, contact weird fan experiences but I had a, like death threats and stuff like that and then oh yeah there was one guy that showed up <laughs> in my <laughs> weird guy showed up and started talking to my kid and then Dave went out with a baseball bat and he went away Oh, but I kind of wow. obviously I locked that one yeah. up and it's now spilling out. But well, he thought that was a little I've odd. Had more scary experiences than weird experiences. It's either been lovely or been kind of scary. Um, but most yeah. of the time, it's wonderful. Yeah. But you're right. I think Erica, like the characters we played, like playing Lana, playing a damsel in distress, I got a lot of people wanting to save me, Ooh. save me yeah. from anything in my life. Uh, so yeah. that was always kind of challenging. But other than that, it's been really nice. Did you, you know, guys ever get those requests from guys in prison? That's weird. Uh, no. Not letters. I don't, I don't even. I never sent pictures back because it was weird. You know what? <laughs> Sorry, guys in prison. I'm sure they just it might be nice guys. at Erica. Hmm? You know, I got to I'm not odd about it. It's Harper, so thank you for that question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say one thing. I was going to say one thing. I did have one thing. Look, I, I love fans of nine, like they said, 99% yeah. of the time. Just awesome, perfect. And they give you your space. They're not going to show up to your house. They're not going to say, I love you. Why don't you love me? You know, there's most of them, but there, there has been one 
that there was one fan a while back that was like, just like, if you don't um, respond to me, if you don't do this, like it was like that Stan by Eminem video, that song or Stan, I don't, you know, it was, it was a little scary. And I finally had to get my uh, lawyer and stuff involved and say, Hey man, I'm worried this, this girl's going to kill herself. And I, you know, I, I, I haven't done anything. I just, you know, not, I mean, nothing, but she was, somebody else was saying, Oh, she said you flew her in your jet. I go, dude, I am not Lex Luthor. I could fly <laughs> on jet. All right. So, and it was, and then one time somebody uh, followed me home. I was bowling. Well, it's my fault. But uh, I went inside, and all of a sudden there was a, a note on the door when I walked back out and said, "Hey, sorry, I'm not weird, but I followed you home from bowling. <laughs> Here's my number." And I'm like, "That's weird. That's weird. It's definitely weird." Well, we've been married for ten years. <laughs> uh, Therese, uh, what aspect of your character do you wish you had in real life? Money. <laughs> and, Jet. I mean, that's the only thing of Lex Luthor I want is a castle and ton, billions of dollars. I mean, sure, then I'd be able to be more charitable than I am. It'd be great. So go kart track. Um, uh, I wouldn't mind super speed. That'd be fun. Oh yeah, you get all the fun things. <laughs> I want you powers. Have powers. You're amazing. Yeah. Take those powers. Kristen just got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, powers and wealth, I think. I, I think we, we are a go. very deep cast. <laughs> hey, I was going to say an abundance of confidence. Okay. She has a good a lot of confidence. Yes, yeah, she did. That's a That's good one. Great. Um, Eric, what, what other than, than billions of dollars does Lex Luthor have? I mean, he's smart, but... Looks? You think he was good looking? I guess he's mean. I, 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 knew, I, knew a lot, I knew a lot of people... Who, I knew a lot of fangirls back in the day that were into you. Yeah, back in the day, the operative words right there. Back in well, the I think, Rosenbaum, I think it's a credit to your talent that you gave Lex this, this aura of intelligence, which I don't, you know, obviously didn't come from you specifically. Um, <laughs> but he seemed like a smart guy. He seemed like he, he did. Yeah. I was faking it. I told you. <laughs> character. Uh, Jerry's, thank you. Uh, next question from Mark. Uh, what is the most emotional Smallville scene for you to film? Uh, I mean, I'll jump in there. I had a scene with, um, with Annette O'Toole where Clark threw a party while mom and dad were out of town. It's a very simple scene um, where she talks about how disappointed she is in Clark. And all of a sudden I'm in the scene and I'm like crying and it wasn't written that way or anything. We just went with it. And it was like one of the coolest acting experiences I've ever had um, because it was, it was just, it was all organic. Um, that one got to me. Uh, what about you, ladies? Anyone else? Are we frozen? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were for a second, so I was just trying not to move. Oh, man. I think mine was probably the last loft scene I had that involved a lot oh. of blubbering. A lot. A lot, a lot. <laughs> was it your goodbye scene? Mm. No, I remember I the goodbye them. scene because Erica. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Kristen. Um, when when the scene out in the parking lot or yeah, the, in the alley, alley. We left, it was literally like we were done filming. You're like, see you later. I'm like, bye. And then years <laughs> later, when I finished, I was like, literally the same way. I was like, bye everybody, and I was like, gone. Oh. Like, was, <laughs> I wasn't hanging out. You know what I mean? I was. Show, job's over, you know. So we have a new uh, new panelist, uh, Laura. Who is that? Oh, this is Frankie. That's, that's it. <laughs> my life. Excellent. Um, so I was going to say, similar to Kristen, probably the really only emotional scene I had was in the loft. My last scene in the loft was flying off and saying goodbye to Clark. Um, I don't remember what the story was but i was leaving and then i remember it being an emotional scene i i think i was just uh honestly it sounds stupid the only thing i can remember is like season three where i'm going crazy i'm in the same asylum mm -hmm. like i'm constantly going nuts and i'm honestly losing my mind in real life like it, i was so i don't know what happened but it was just like it was just the, i i it was really tough for me 
And I remember being like, there's a scene where I'm in a straight jacket. I'm just staring into the, I'm not supposed to see my father who's standing there looking at me. He put me in there and I just had all these feelings and I got emotional about it. I just was like, God, almost like imagining what it'd be like to like really lose your mind, like not be able to. And there was like an essence of that where I was just like, oh my gosh, it was just lonely. It was weird. It was weird. It was cool. But, you know, <clears throat> I chill you know, that. Whatever. <laughs> I remember Rosenbaum. I don't know if you remember doing this, but we would do these scenes. Like a lot of times you don't see people leave a scene. It's just edited. You jump to the next one. And we were doing a scene one time where Rosenbaum actually, Lex Luthor walked out of the room and you kept walking. And you're like, I'm leaving. Like, this is it, right? This is the final take. And you're like, well, yeah, if it's the right one. And you just kept walking. And they're like, Rosemary, we need another one. And you're like already halfway across like the warehouse that we were filming. In. And you're like, what? I thought we got it. Damn it. And then you came back and you kept walking out the door and you just kept walking. Like, it's hilarious. Oh, my God. I do remember that. They're like, this is the last take and I'm moving on. So you're like, great, I'm moving on. We need one more. <laughs> Mark, thank you for that question. Let's roll another one from Crystal. Ah, what do you put in first, milk or cereal? Cereal. 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 Who does milk first? Yeah. Weird people. <laughs> oh. Why did I have to think about that? I don't need cereal. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> thank you, Crystal. What's next? From Leanne, who are your personal heroes? Everyone on this screen right now. Who are you guys? Even me? I thought you were being sarcastic. Well, I love you. My grandfather. You're like, I don't believe you, but I was like, thanks. Thanks for the information. <laughs> Immediately. Oh, really? We wouldn't be here without each other. That's for sure. Oh, you know what? Real quick, I'll say my personal hero is um, my buddy Preston Christensen. He's a... Uh, He's a 14 year old. He just turned 15 on July 8th. The um, Ronald McDonald House. He goes, you know, he's had many surgeries. He has terminal cancer and he's the toughest kid. I've never seen anyone that tough and that sweet and that engaging and just loves life. And is so, uh, it, just, it just blows me away. He's, he's a hero. I, I, I mean, I, you know, to have that strength and to have that, uh, he's just a great kid. So I'd say him. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it was okay. Erica, oh, no. I was going to let you guys talk. I'm talking too much. I was just going to say Gordon Pinson. He's uh, actually, as of today, 90 years old. Today is his birthday. 90 today. Um, he's an iconic Canadian actor, and he's been my mentor since I was young. So he's definitely my role model. Aren't you related to him? Yes. Okay. I want to say it about that life. I mean, yeah. I, he's like my third cousin. So. Huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> not super related. So not super related, but he did my film for me, which was great, and that was a great moment. So he is—he's a Canadian icon. He's an icon. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. Um, excellent. Mine's like well, my mom for many many reasons, and especially as I'm a mom now, and I realize what she did kind of all by herself with three kids for ever. Um, I have more and more respect for. And then after COVID, I was like, oh my god, is this what you did? You were just in the house cooking. <laughs> six meals a day for everybody. Um, <laughs> my grandma who's 98 and is a super badass and uh, she's just, she's lost so many people. She's really tough and she's, yeah, she's just zest for life. Um, and then my original drama teacher who's like became a second mom to me. Um, and I realized how important she was to me this year. I mean, you know, that sounds weird to say that because she's always been important, but I found out she had cancer and then she she fought it and all of a sudden you're reflecting back on what that person's contributed to your life and I realized she's the like she is the person that is positive she's the person that always dreams and she always sees the best in everything and I think that that's been a huge um part of what what made me like just always looking for something good and always trying to be positive and she's super wacky and funny and she'll make quick friends with anybody anywhere and so yeah that's nice that's nice, yeah. Very nice indeed. Excellent. <laughs> I can uh, see my dog too to lighten the mood. <laughs> my dog. And this question will be our last one of this session and from some Chris who wants to know, what is something weird that makes you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah. 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 Sarah.
Something mm -hmm. weird? Something weird mm -hmm. that makes you laugh. Rosenbaum. Michael Rosenbaum. Michael <laughs> Rosenbaum. <laughs> <laughs> Something weird that makes you laugh, you asshole. <laughs> no, it's just good. Uh, something weird that makes me laugh. You know, when, when people fall, but they're not hurt. But like if somebody has like, Whoa! or if someone just has like, they look like they're going to fall from it, and you're like, Whoa! and then they don't. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> moment oh, kills me, man. Those. Oh, I love it. I love watching people wipe out. <laughs> this is not unexpected and it's not weird, but I've noticed during this whole time, it's been really important for me to watch comedians at night so that I laugh. Because I've been like, so lately I've been watching Jim Jeffries. I don't know if anybody watched this. You know my podcast. I love Jim. He's great. Oh my God. Yeah. I left for like two hours straight last night. He's so great. I love That's him. what I've been doing. I've been watching a lot of comedians. He's hilarious. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Is a good Chris, <laughs> Laura, anything, anything odd or unusual, or what, 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 what makes you laugh in general? I am very easy to make laugh in, in general. I laugh very easily. Um, I like That's it true. when people do like superhero voices, like really deep superhero voices with accents. Kristen, <laughs> <laughs> I love you more than anything in the world. <laughs> Oh. That was very specific. I, I, I thought it was weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> we work together, together Christmas. We do laugh a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Laura, what makes you laugh? Um, I I really horror love, movies. <laughs> <laughs> I really love a dry sense of humor and um, sarcasm. So if someone can do that with me, that's that's a lot of fun, especially <laughs> at work. Like, I'm uh, usually the one to do that. That's what she said. I mean, now I'm trying not to do that, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. Chris, thank you for that last yes, question. Man. Galaxy Town viewers, this has been the cast of Smallville, and that was my time, but it did not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat directly with our guests like I have today or purchase an autograph or get a personalized recorded message, please head over to galaxycon.com. And while you're there, be sure to check out our schedule of upcoming events like this one. Panelists, before we go, any final words? Thanks for doing this, man. It's yeah. nice to feel this connection with you guys and, and the fans as well, especially considering everything and you know, this is fun. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. You. We hope you're all Thank staying you guys. healthy. Yeah, guys, thanks. This has been amazing. Without you guys, I think we'd all be bored to death, literally. So it's nice to engage and interact and just have fun and forget about life for a while. Well, the good, <laughs> what I've been doing. I got to work a today. How awesome. I've been doing a lot of uh, inside of you because I get to hear Rosalind's voice and it's very calming. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Tom's been on the podcast a couple times. So he'll be on again, but uh, everybody else has been. So hound Eric on on uh, a Twitter to be on the podcast. She'll come okay. on. Tell but, us a little bit. Of, tell us a little bit about your podcast because you have a unique angle towards it. You know, it's it, it always just started out as like well, you should do a podcast. You have a decent voice. I'm like, all right, you have a you know a face for radio, as they say. And I was like, all right, you know, I'll uh, I'll do it. I thought you know it'd be, and then it just when I started opening up, you you're almost forced to just open up and. And when people see that, they, I think they appreciate it more and then they engage more. And so my guests open up about stress, anxiety. Yeah. Erica, Stephen and Mel had an anxiety attack on the podcast. And I was like, no, keep it, man. I want to talk about it. And Zach <laughs> Levi and all these people have come on and talk about loss and life. You had to come back a couple of days later. I remember yeah. I talked to him after that and he was like, dude, I, he told me what, you told me what happened and then he told me what happened separately. And he's like, I'm going back, dude. I need to talk about what just happened. It was actually really cool. He doesn't really, I mean, now he knows, but like it helps people so much. There's so many of us who have anxiety and things, especially in this. And when he came back on to talk about it, people were like, oh, this guy who's muscular, good looking, and a superhero on TV, he's able to talk about anxiety and open up about it. And I think that was brilliant. And that's pretty much what the show was. We just talk, it's not like we talk so heavy all the time, but we, we talk about real stuff and it's not just about what you do. I remember Rain Wilson from The Office goes, are we going to talk about The Office at all? I go, I we don't have to. And I go, we were talking about his dog that passed away and like, like just life and real stuff. And it was, yeah. um, 
I love it. So it's called Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. So absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Jenny, gentlemen and ladies, it has been an absolute pleasure to host you today. And uh, we absolutely look forward to getting back into your business and having you back on our stages and in front of your fans once again. And until then, thank you so much for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you, our audience, for joining us today. Thank you for all those great questions. Uh, join us again tomorrow as GalaxyCon presents Rock Around the Ring and Tuesday for GalaxyCon Docs Comics. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and please keep washing those hands. Patty, you're adorable. Thank you. Thank you, boss.